had what I thought might have been construed as signs or, you know, symptoms that, you know, I thought I just had bad gas or stomach or I ate something, you know, that I just, oh, I'm young, I'm invincible, and I'm plowing through, I'm just, you know, I'm doing, I'm living my life, I'm, yeah. I was diagnosed when I was 28. In the summer of 2000, I had moved to London, actually. Uh, at the end of that summer, I had what I thought were stomach attacks, um, very encompassing, debilitating stomach attacks just across the entire abdominal area that for, I don't know, 16 hours, it just lasted. Nothing I did, did anything. Standing up, sitting down, lying down, curling up, whatever. Pills, you know, pain uh, relief, nothing. Uh, had another stomach attack. So that's when we did a CAT scan and then I went to the gynecological direction. And two, three opinions later, um, I met with an oncologist who said, most likely you have a malignancy in the ovaries. And my life changed forever. You know, so at, at our age, we're not even really told that we need to think about it. It's, it's sort of the way I usually say it. It's sort of either pediatric or geriatric. There's this void in the middle where people aren't told, you know, this is something you need to be potentially concerned about even. As of, as of January, will be eight years. Some people use their last chemo treatment. Some people, you know, my, but my last surgery was in January of 2003. So I use that because pretty much after that point I have been okay. So I haven't had to have any other treatments or follow-up surgeries or anything. So <laughs> that's my eight-year date. The day that I heard the words, you have cancer. Time stopped. What is The Whisper? Mm -hmm. The Whisper is a documentary, a 30 minute documentary uh, about ovarian cancer. How The Whisper came about is interesting. It's because of the worldwide interweb. <laughs> Actually, the producer, Brian, uh, found my website and wrote to me, this is before he even, I think, had funding or anything. He wrote to me that he wanted to do this documentary about ovarian cancer and he'd like me to be the host. The reason that it's called The Whisper is because uh, that is the way that ovarian cancer communicates. It whispers. It doesn't announce itself. It doesn't come with bells and whistles. It's uh, a number of symptoms that are easily attributed to benign, uh, non-malignant um, things that are going on. It can be a stomach, it could be a stomach ache, irritable bowel syndrome, for example, endometriosis. Um, if you have gas or bloating, it's sort of no one wants to make the leap from these kinds of symptoms to do I have a stomach ache or do I have ovarian cancer? So that's the reason it's called the whisper because it's sort of, it's there and it's talking and it's sort of making its presence known, but not really. It's wearing a mask. And it's the reason why they call it the silent killer is, you know, it graduates from being a whisper to the silent killer because it just, it's diagnosed late stage and by the time it's usually actually diagnosed, it's, it's so far along that, you know, it ultimately, the woman dies. One of the purposes for the documentary is about generating enough awareness and people talking about it so we can um, stress the importance of raising funds to do research to develop early detection because that's um, a huge advantage in many of the cancers that have high survival rates is they have screening tests and markers and um, defin more definitive ways to uh, preempt a, you know, a metastasis or anything else like that. So for me anyway, and I think for this documentary, early detection is something that we're talking about a lot. Choosing to stay bald, hmm, that's a long story. <laughs> the idea of losing my hair, it did, for a moment it freaked me out, but I, I don't know where I found this, but it just, it, this is, it was brought out, I guess, by the experience, it was immediately, okay, well, I'm gonna lose my hair, so I'm gonna have fun with it, at least, you know. So I had a head shaving party, <laughs> and I called a friend of mine, and was like, where can we get some shears, you know, so like some clippers, you know. And we all sat around and watched the how-to video of, you know, 
this is how you give someone a fade, and this is how you know, <laughs> this is how to do a buzz. So we and we went outside and on the, on the dock by the water, and everybody took turns shaving my head. <laughs> and then when I when I stood up, when I looked at myself without hair, it was just this weird, you know, I was just looking into my eyes for the first time in a way I had never really looked at myself. I was just seeing myself for the first time. <laughs> Sorry. And it's what happened <laughs> at some point in this interview. <laughs> bald is beautiful isn't necessarily just about being bald and not covering it up at all or whatever. It's more about the attitude that you have when you walk out in the world. Um, so if you're not going to wear hair, just you know, stand up, put on a smile, go bold with the earrings, you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, but if you're going to cover it up, hats, scarves, wigs, it's more about the attitude that you have underneath. You still need to be loving yourself and, you know, have fun with it. Change, you know, flip it over, you know, have fun with it um, because you can't cover up feeling ugly or feeling ashamed. So, and we don't have room for negative energy. Our cells, every cell has to be self-loving and supporting ourselves. So um, it's not about... It's not about being bald, but it, it's about finding your inner bald woman. <laughs>